As rumors continue to swirl surrounding Alexis Sanchez's future, Arsene Wenger has been very clear that the Chilean is not for sale. But there's a problem. He has taken that stance on countless occasions in previous windows, and each time Arsenal have eventually buckled. The Gunners' pre-season tour of Australia and China has seen Wenger resume media duties, and he has frequently been asked about Sanchez. The message has been clear from the Frenchman, their decision has been made and we will stick to that, the decision is not to sell. Yet French media are reporting that Sanchez has already agreed a four-year deal with PSG, while Manchester City have successfully lured five previous Arsenal players to the Etihad and the Pep Guardiola factor could make it a sixth. The problem for Arsenal fans is that Wenger has a record for committing to keeping players only to sell them, sometimes even just days after making his promise. Even the phrases Wenger has used in reference to Sanchez dash its only media imagination dash have been uttered about previous players who were later sold. So can we truly trust what Wenger says, or do his actions speak louder than words? You be the judge. Wenger was adamant that Henry would remain an Arsenal player, even describing Barcelona's interest as made up, exactly as he has done with Sanchez now. But within two weeks of those remarks the French striker was holding up a blue and red shirt. A few days later Eduardo joined from Dinamo Zagreb, but while the Croatian scored seven league goals in his entire Arsenal career, Henry Topp scored for Barca in his first season and won the Champions League in his second. Wenger held on to Adebayor after he hit 30 goals in a single season, despite interest from the likes of AC Milan, though an indifferent campaign followed. The French coach was clearly more willing to offload the Togolese forward a year later, and, in this instance, his comments about still having Adebayor in his plans seemed designed to extract maximum value for the striker rather than giving away the fact that he was happy to sell. The summer of 2011 was a miserable one for Wenger. Nasri and Clichy were coming to the ends of their contracts and were garnering interest from Man City, while Barcelona once again resumed their pursuit of Fabregas. Wenger was always fighting a losing battle as far as the latter was concerned, but Nasri was seen as the heir to the Spaniard's creative throne and his decision to move to a side that had not finished higher than third in the Premier League really grated. Wenger put up a good fight to keep Fabregas, only finally selling when the Premier League season had already begun. This move always felt inevitable, though, even if Wenger didn't think that way. Barcelona's interest was significant and long-standing, while Fabregas, with a little bit of persuading from the likes of Spanish teammate Gerard Pique, was adamant that he wanted to return to Barcelona. In the end, Wenger could not stand in his way. The Van Persie saga is often cited as the most recent example of Wenger not staying true to his transfer pledges, the Frenchman claims this situation was different from Sanchez, though his comments have incorrectly cited Van Persie as being on the verge of turning 31 when he joined United, when in reality he had just turned 29, and was only five months older than Sanchez is now. Ultimately, Arsenal had to cash in but back then they already had Champions League football. Now, Alexis could be worth more to the Gunners by firing them back to the top four, even if he leaves for free next summer, the Sanya deal provides the most hope for Arsenal fans. Back in 2012, he was giving interviews criticizing the club's decision to sell Van Persie and seemed to be angling for a move as his contract ran down. But Wenger said he would not be sold and never changed that stance, even though it saw Arsenal sacrifice a transfer fee as Sanya moved to Man City on a free transfer two years after he had first got itchy feet. 